Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Patiin po natin ang magandang hapon ang ating mga katabi. Kung wala po kayong katabi, uh, pwede nyo namang i-PM ang inyo pong mga kasamahan na uh, those who are watching with you. So magandang hapon po sa lahat. Welcome to our new session po of our Learn as One PH on Flexible Learning brought to you by Bibal. So let's start. Kamusta po kayong lahat? Okay. So let me share my screen so we can start our discussion. Again, good afternoon. I am Vivian Intatano. I am an educator. I'm a teacher like you. And I am a teacher trainer. So as a teacher trainer and uh, a teacher, I adhere to my advocacies for effective technology for integration, environment education, and global citizenship education. With this um, session, uh, live session in Bibal, um, we are going to discuss the topic on transitioning to asynchronous learning. So if in case you have questions in your mind right before we uh, and our session or while I, I am having my discussion, you may also type in your questions or if in case your questions were not answered, you may reach me through my email vintatano at gmail.com. To start with, okay, to start with, let us have some rules first. So, etong rule natin, uh, this will be our rule while we are doing our live session here. So, just like you in your classrooms, you also have your rule. So, let us also follow some rules here while doing our session for this afternoon. So, just remember the pear. So, that's one of the most expensive um, fruits nowadays, no? Lalo ngayon quarantine, parang lahat halos nag nagmahal. So, Buti pa sila nagmahal. So, eto ngayon, let us um, remember peer. So, P for pay attention. So, just listen. So, we will be only airing until 
uh, one to one and a half hours. So I hope I can get all your attention. So in short, listen attentively. E is engage. Try to engage in whatever um, questions I'm going to throw in here. Or if in case um, I am going to ask you to do something like Karina sabi ko, greet the person beside you or PM your your fellow educators who are also watching with you. So engage. No? Let's make it an engaging activity this afternoon. A is ask questions. Do not hesitate to ask questions if there are some unclear or something that you really want to know pa, aside from the things that I will be discussing as long as it is related with our discussion. And for R, let us have respect. Okay, this is very much important. So respect each other's opinion. If in case you see something or words or um, any comments from your fellow viewers, which you, you will see on the screen or on the chat box, just remember to um, extend courtesy, respect. May I also say R for reflect. So while we are doing the discussion, it's a good time for us to reflect. As educator, what will be our role in implementing this? Oh, that you're going to learn this afternoon. And you can also make a resolution no, for letter R and dami nating letter R, ha? For letter R, you can also have resolution. So after this, take action. Be sure you have your own resolution. You can, after you reflect, you have your resolution on what you're going to do to improve more, okay? So before anything else, um, before we move on further, let us have a getting to know you activity. Ayan, sabi ko kanina, engage ha. So, um, everybody type in. So, may I request everyone to please type in paulf.com slash vivianbam292 or the one that you see on the screen. Ayan. So, you will be directed to a um, website no, in that activity. So for those who have cell phone, you may also use your cell phone. For those, you can transfer to another browser and then type that uh, paulev.com. So let me transfer my screen. So you should be seeing this one now. I hope everyone is seeing. So you may answer. So ang tanong ko, which do you prefer for breakfast? Yan ba ang unang lumabas? Pakicheck nga. Okay. So meron kayang nagsagot. Ayun. Ayan, salamat sa mga kaway-kaway sa mga katulad kong may ko mahilig sa coffee. Ayan na po. Ang tawag po sa app na ito ay Paul Everywhere. So this is used for um, a real-time survey like this that I'm doing now. So whenever I start my discussion, pag mga nasa seminar, uh, I used to invite my my participants to really play this one. And I also, I'm doing this with my students also. Ayan. So, bawa lang nagkakape na malamig. Ayan. O, kaway-kaway, ang daming mahilig sa hot coffee, ha? Oo. So, mara maraming nakakamiss na sa mga kape sa labas, I'm sure, ngayong quarantine. Ayan. So, dumadami ang ating mga sumasagot. So I understand yung iba hindi gana. So we have sa mga participants natin, 54% they prefer hot coffee. O sige, yung sa mga hindi nakaabot, eto, tignan natin. Ha. Still, you have to type uh, paulev.com slash vivianbam292. Yan pa din yan. Okay, next screen natin ay, ayan, tingnan natin. What new skill you learn during this ECQ? Aba, ang dami. Wow, ang daming gardening matutuwa si Mother Earth nito. Yan, ako maraming naging chef, no? After this quarantine, ang dami na nating chef. Okay, baking? Oo, marami din. So maraming na garden ngayon, ano? At marami na ring future chef. So ang mga teachers pwede nang lahat magturo siguro ng TL iba sa cooking, ano? Okay, so Ayan. So, walang nagsagot ng nan at wala ding other. So, may mga nag-play ng instrument. Ayan, may mga nanahidin. Baking. Nako, kanina ko ay saw my teacher 
nag-share siya ng ano niya, marunong na siyang mag-bake ng blueberry cheesecake. Same thing with me, I also learn how to bake pandesal, come to think of it, and cookies, no? Na hindi ko nagagawa dati. And that's because we are in currently in ECQ. And napakagandang makita na tayo ay productive, no? Ngayon. Let's have the next one. Ayan. Did you follow my instruction in my introduction? Yes. Naku, salamat po. Aba, no? Bakit kaya? Walang katabi? Walang nai-chat? Oo, salamat po sa mga sumunod. No? My instruction was, for those who arrived late, um, sabi ko, i-greet yung mga katabi, kung may katabi, o kaya i-PM, i-message yung mga kasama ng teachers, those who are watching with them. Kasi I'm sure there are groups of uh, teachers who are watching in their own respective places. Okay. Uh, sige, tingnan nga natin. Taga saan ang mga nanunood ngayon sa atin? Wow. Great. So we have more from NCR. Kaway-kaway sa mga teachers dyan sa NCR, lalo sa Raha Soliman. Maraming mga teachers sa Raha Soliman. Magandang hapon po. Lalo sa mga taga-science department, sa mga teachers ko sa science department, at sa mga ka-department heads ko sa Raha Soliman. Kaway-kaway din sa mga taga-Visayas. Aba, may taga-Visayas tayo. For sure, they are from Coleo San Agustin, Bacolod. Hello po sa inyo. Ayan, meron din tayo mga Southern Luzon and from Northern Luzon na nanunood sa atin. Okay, siguro meron din tayo, I'm sure, from Mindanao. Kaya lang, they cannot connect right now or baka they cannot um, participate, no? Kasi this is a real time na ano natin. So more are from NCR. Okay, did you enjoy our poll everywhere? Okay, I hope so. So mamaya meron pa tayong isang gagawin similar to that. Okay, moving on. Let us continue. Okay, again, we are going to discuss about transitioning to asynchronous learning. So, of course, before we move on discussing this transitioning to asynchronous learning, we have to discuss first what asynchronous learning. Uh, what you are doing in your classroom, what we do in our classroom, uh, this is asynchronous learning. No? We are in a real time, face to face with our students, we are together. However, what we're going to discuss now is an online learning. So that's what, what you've learned from the past uh, lessons here in our series of webinars, that um, online learning has two modes. No? We have synchronous and asynchronous learning. So uh, let us just recall what asynchronous learning is. So of course, it's an online learning. So it makes use of the internet communication media. Okay. Uh, students and teacher accessing the same website at the same time. So um, example of this is scheduled quizzes, discussion, conference, live streaming, just like what we are doing. So whatever activities you are throwing to your participants or to the students, these are done at the same time. So you are accessing it. Of course, there are... Um, uh, advantages and disadvantages. Advantage is in a synchronous learning, you can directly get and immediately the response of the students. And whatever difficulty the students are experiencing with regards to your learning, you can immediately respond. Diba? So that is in synchronous. Siyempre, ang asynchronous, uh, ang, ang disadvantage naman niya, no? Um, you, if, if a student or a participant has a difficulty when, when it comes to an internet connection, that will be a very big problem actually, you know? Kasi uh, you need to be at the same time. Or if there is um, an emergency that happened, uh, which you need to be out with that particular time, so you cannot, or the participant or the student cannot participate in your lesson anymore. Now let me just share. During our PhD lesson, uh, we had this asynchronous learning. So we were supposed to have it at seven o'clock. Uh, however, I was attending an awarding ceremony. It was an activity in, in Manila. 
So I was with the students, with teacher, and actually with my son because he was one of the participants there. So it was seven o'clock and then I PM all my, my classmates and even my, my, my teacher. I told them I cannot make it because I'm still at the program. So they move it to eight o'clock. But what happened, it's already almost eight o'clock and we just ended. So I was rushing to the parking lot, I was driving. I was able to access our online platform, but I was driving so I could no longer participate. So it's, it's a disadvantage in that part. No? So medyo na-off ako nun sa prof ko, na, nahiya ako kasi they moved the class, pero I wasn't able to make it kasi na-late din yung tapos nung, nung seminar, anong awarding. So that makes it a disadvantage uh, part of synchronous learning. No? So kasi kailangan it must be at the same time. Okay, so let us have some tools for synchronous learning. Um, ito, mga familiar kayo din, mga audio and video conferencing via Zoom. Ito, we are doing now, no? So, we are, you are learning. I'm doing the discussion. So, we're doing it at the same time and we are accessing the same platform. Uh, audio, you can also have Viber. You can also have Skype. And if you don't want to be heard or you don't want to be seen, you can also do your synchronous learning through chat through messages, okay? And all other platforms, these are just the common platforms. WebEx is also one of the um, conference uh, tool, no? Platform for your video conferencing. Okay, so that's the synchronous part of online learning. Let us now have our topic, which is asynchronous learning. So this is actually the opposite of synchronous. In the sense that, of course, they are the same online learning. It uses online resources also. No? However, students access the same communication tool at different time, at different places. So um, you can give your discussion, you can manage your class. Students in different places can access it in different time, in their own time. So it's more convenient in the part of the student. If in case the student cannot have the access in the internet at this time, since it is asynchronous learning, you can still have it. No? They can still grab your, uh, they can still grab your discussion. They can still participate in whatever activity you will provide for them. Okay, it is, there is also flexibility of learning. Flexibility in sense that it is self-paced. Okay, it is self-paced. Um, student can think of their own time, can manage their own time in finishing the resources, in finishing the, the activity that you will post to them. And at the same time, they can also choose which one to do first. Is it the most difficult one? Baka sobrang hirap pa, so pwede lang itabi muna. Uh, I will go to the, the easier one first. So they can manage their own learning. So that's why it's flexible. And they can also look for other resources aside from the one that you have given them. So it makes it flexible. No? They can make use of other uh, resources. They can make use of their own time. In that sense, we say it is flexible. The learning is flexible. This, there are lots of tools for asynchronous learning. Okay, email, no? very familiar Taijian. So you can use this tool. You can have your students um, Give your email address and then let them submit your, your um, activity via email. You can also give a link. Uh, let's say, for example, you would like to share something about NASA, about the, the recent news on NASA. You can also share the link or a blog. Now you, you have seen a blog for the English teachers and then you want them to react or comment or do something about the blog. So a web link is another tool. And blogging is another tool also that you can use for asynchronous learning. Discussion board. In discussion board, there are most of the learning management systems use discussion board or it's embedded in the learning management system. This is to give time or give a platform for the students 
to exchange ideas. So that's the purpose of the discussion board. You can discuss, they can comment. If you have some question, they will answer through the discussion board. And use of survey and poll, just like what we did a while ago, poll everywhere, the Google Forms. Now, if you know how to use the Google Sheets, the Google Form, um, you can use it for the quizzes or for, for some of the um, collaboration for the students. Audio and video streaming, you can have YouTube, you can have Spotify, if you want them to discuss about a particular song, you can have them watch a, in, it in YouTube, or you can also give a link from Spotify or YouTube. Another tool for asynchronous learning is a learning management system. This is very much important because it's a system or a, an online platform where you can manage your classes. Those tools that I have mentioned, aside from that, marami pa yan, you know, these are just the most commonly used na mga tools which I've mentioned. Uh, we, you are going to choose your own learning management system or platform where you can um, integrate, where you can um, incorporate all those tools which can be used in your uh, class. So that's an online platform to manage your system. So mga examples ng LMS, mga Google Classroom, uh, what else? Canvas, no? I, I, in our PhD class, we make use of Canvas. Sakai, if you have heard about it. Blackboard, no? I experienced using Blackboard in Kent State University before. So it's a very good learning management system too. Um, Moodle, no? And of course, Vsmart. Okay, Vsmart from Vibal. Now let me walk you through to a vSmart learning management system. So in all other le learning management system, may similarity sila, you know? But this time I would like to walk you through before I move on with the vSmart learning management system. So once you, you sign in, once you get an account, what do you expect to be there in a vSmart learning management system? Okay, so it is a perfect teaching and learning partner tool. What does it include? It has gamified and interactive resources. Um, it has an AR-ready Vibal eBooks. No, I've experienced using the AR of uh, eBooks ng Vibal, uh, AR ng Vibal, and even I have um, experience uh, browsing their eBooks. It's really great. Uh, it's a learning management and learning record system in one. Why? Because it's in the loob niya, no? Meron siyang dashboard. So if you look at my screen can see on my screen, uh, there are different uh, menus. No? Nandiyan yung discussion board, uh, my dashboard, classroom, assessments, um, what is that? Course, library. Okay, so this is what inside the learning management system. With all other learning management system that I have mentioned before, Medyo may, may mga ganyan din, may discussion board, may classroom, you can also manage that. In here, this is particularly on Vsmart. You can view your activities at a glance in the dashboard. Okay, you can view your students list and their current status. So that's what you can see on the screen. There is also a create, you know, ongoing and completed lessons on the class that you can view. And you can also manage your own classroom. So if you have three sections, three classes, you can put it there. So that is under the classroom menu. There is also an assessment platform. Okay, you can easily create assessments. And what is good in here is that there are also prepared assessments, which you can also use. Uh, so so that's make, that makes it um, a complete package for the vSmart. You can also create crossword puzzle, create memory game. In all other um, platform also, it, which I've mentioned, you can also create activities there, but you have to get it outside. So you can create activity, you can put the link there. But in here, with the vSmart, there is already a tool for you to create your own interactive activity. These are just, the two are just the examples. And also the library, we're in collection of books, uh, of different books, ebooks are there. Okay, so that's the e 
um, the the B Smart, okay, the the learning management system of Bibal. Okay, what are the advantages of using this asynchronous learning? Shampi, like what I've said, it is self-paced. When you say self-paced, there is flexibility of learning. Students can use or make use of his or her own time. They can choose their own adventure. No, they can create their own adventure, which one they want to, to begin first, and how will they want to end the topic or the discussion. So it's on their own. Um, uh, they can work towards their own mastery. No, they can look into a challenging areas, no, ng activity mo within your, your discussion. So it's self-paced, no, na ma-manage nila. That makes it more a student-centered learning. Okay. Another advantage of um, asynchronous learning is it provides an online collaboration. For your students, siyempre they are on different places, especially now with our situation that they are on their houses. We are all in quarantine. So they cannot have the collaboration because they cannot be together. However, with the asynchronous discussion, you can still provide that. One example is you can have uh, on your discussion board um, a sort of question wherein they will answer together. In that sense, they are uh, collaborating. No, they have the online collaboration to come up with the answer per team. Another one, you can also uh, use Google uh, Forms or Google Slide, particularly. Let's say, for example, you would like to um, have them create poems or e-poster no, about um, the situation now. So you would like them to have an essay, an e-poster, no, a publication material, you can have them um, form or create their publication material about your topic, doing it online. They don't have to go to one houses just to finish it, but they can do that using the online platform. Okay. Um, another one, so it's, it promotes online collaboration. They can solve problems together, no? although they are on different uh, places okay and also the third advantage is portfolio learning okay, in portfolio learning they can collect all the learning materials they can have the collection of all the learning materials now you can have the e-portfolio platforms where students can track their records yung mga na check nyo na yung assignments and then the projects and all other uh, links that you have um, posted there students can create their own e-portfolio. Siyempre, if there are advantages, may mga drawbacks din, ano? Uh, may disadvantages. In this asynchronous discussion or learning, you can get immediate response from the teacher. Siyempre, kasi nga online, ano? Uh, but of course, if um, the student needs assistance, you can always find ways. You can tell them na, oh, if you need immediate um immediate response or immediate assistance, you can PM me and then you can have one-on-one. -on -one. So you can always find solution. But that's one disadvantage nga. Uh, if the student need immediate response, wala agad si teacher doon. And like with synchronous, nandiyan si teacher magsasagot. But with this one, um, syempre, but you can arrange with the student. Pwede nyo sabihin na, you text me if my immediate concern para mag-online ako agad. So may mga ganon. Okay, another drawback is students who needed constant guidance may find it hard to follow. Kasi nga, we don't, um, we are not there to, to guide them. But again, there's a solution to that. We can always ask um, par, uh, assistance. We can do partner with the parents to ask them, no? to help them, to ask for their help, to guide the students in answering. Pag hindi talaga, you can provide several uh, links or any other external sources which they can also find their answer. Another disadvantage is difficulty in following instructions. So to those students uh, who find it very difficult to follow instructions, in an online learning like this, which is not in the same time, 
uh, parang students will be off. Medyo, they will find it hard. So, um, kaya you, teachers should adjust uh, their schedule ng submission or the end ng task. Kasi nga, there are, with the differences in um, learning ng mga ba learning styles ng bata, there are really students who have difficulty in following instructions. So um, again, with this disadvantage, the teacher can still find ways. No? Um, pwedeng you can create another if you find out that you have a student like that. You can always um, give a Filipino instruction also or you can have a plain or clear. So it's a challenge for us to make always a clear instruction for our students. Okay, so we have to consider the following in transitioning, no? if you would like to transition, especially at the time natin, this is the time for us to really embrace what we have now. No? So, sabi nga, sa news, for the past few days, I've been hearing the word our new normal. If this will be our new normal, I think it's a time for us to accept and embrace that we have to really transition to asynchronous learning. So we have to consider the following. So I'll be giving you some guides on how will you transition no, to asynchronous learning. First, of course, we prepare. That's very important. So we have to remember the three. PST, what is that? Any guess? Pag magpe-prepare, this is very important. Okay. So, ang P, P stands for plan. No? Lay down the cards. What is always begin with the end in mind? What is your objective of doing this? Okay. Um, of course, this is all for the learning of our students. For the successful learning of our students. So lay down the cards, lay down your plan, look at the human resources. Do we have enough people? Do our teachers know how to do this kind of mod modality? Do our teachers, um, do they know, do they have enough skills in using this technology you know, that we have mentioned and all other technology that we have there? Example, you will be, you decide to use the vSmart. Do they have the the who's going to train us about this no about the new technology so we have to plan that plan the timeline no plan for the different technologies that you are going to to use you can research you can with all those that you have already heard i'm sure you have heard different tools already for the past seminar so you can include that in your plan look for for um Profiling ng students, may mga bata ba tayong merong mga internet connection? Siyempre, hindi naman lahat yan. Walang internet connection. Still, there are students who have internet connection. So this part of learning, this mode of learning, asynchronous learning is possible. Paano po pag wala naman silang internet? Siguro, uh, at, at this moment, I believe DepEd is doing its best to provide no, students with this type of learning. That's why they have the DepEd Commons. Eh. And um, from the recent na, na announcement sa atin, um, this, can be, uh, this can be accessed through uh, Globe and SmartDAO na to those networks for free. No? Kaya shout out po sa mga taga Globe, sa mga taga Smart and all other networks. Make it really free for us. Kasi this is the time po na... <clears throat> Our students need help, especially to those who do not have the access. No? And shout out din sa kanila. Sana po um, lahat ng mga connections natin maayos. Kasi yung iba, you have your packet Wi-Fi. Pero wala namang signal. Di ba? So wala din. Kahit na may packet Wi-Fi ka nga, wala namang signal. So uh, paging paging po tayo sa mga taga network natin, provider, to please give us a quality a more. Baka po hindi nyo lang alam na walang signal sa lugar na yon. So pakitingnan po kasi simula po ng June, July, August, September, nag kailanganin na po ng mga bata ang internet connection. Part ng planning natin, 
makipag-partner. Baka pwede naman si mayor, si barangay chairman, di ba? They can help us provide. So say for example, sa barangay na to, there are lots of students who are enrolled in our school. So what we can do, we can do partnership with the barangay chairman. Uh, sir, kasi marami po kaming bata and we will do this kind of learning. Baka po pwede ma-provide. So baka naman si mayor, si chairman, yung mga LGU natin, they know that we need to continue our uh, teaching and learning even in this pandemic time. Baka naman maisama sana, no? kaya shout out po sa kanilang lahat dyan. Dito sa lugar namin, one time, I, I'm from Cavite, may nadadaanan ako dito na barangay. Eh. They have their own uh, internet connection for everyone. But of course, if they will provide, sana, no? um, if they will provide, this must be used only for students learning. No? To have this um, asynchronous learning. So lahat yan ipaplano natin. What are we going to use? Okay? So ipaplano. You can put that whatever format you want as long as you plan. You include the time, the resources, the challenges, and everything. It's part of our preparation. S. S is you select. No? Select among those tools that you know. You only select which are you going to use. Select nyo, baka naman sa dinami-dami, ay gamit tayo ng Google, gamit tayo ng ganito, gamit tayo ng BSmart, gamit. Lahat ginamit nyo na, nalito na lahat si teacher, nalito na sa school, no? Pag-usapan, no? Ano doon, i-select natin sa lahat ng mga na-identify nating tool, which are we going to use first? That's very important. If you have already selected it, this is another one, no? Very important then, train. Train first the teachers who will use that. Kasi without proper training, teachers cannot use that in their asynchronous learning. No, lahat magsasabi, ay, ayoko niyan. Ay, wag yan. Oh, di maganda yan eh. No? So, kaya mga ganyan tayong mga comment. No, but this time, itrain ang teacher. No? Train tayo. Dami-daming mga free na platform ngayon. You can work together. Isa-isahin. Kasi iba yung nahawakan ni teacher, iba yung na-experience niya how to use it. Mas papahalagahan niya, mas alam niya while using it, while practicing how to use it or learning how to use it, teachers already are conceptualizing at the back of his or her mind, ah, pwede ko itong gamitin sa recall. Ah, I can use this during formative assessment. So kaya importante yung hands-on training. So one time, I gave a training sa isang school on technology. Sabi ko na, but if walang hands-on, really the teachers will not appreciate it. Okay? So yung, yung school na yon, yung iba, talagang they are very eager. Kaya lang, wala na ma-access din yung iba. So wala sa kanila, hindi, nila na, hindi rin nila naintindihan kung paano gagawin. So, importante po na i-train bawat isa. No? You just don't say na, oh, ito, gamitin niya yan. Ito, gamitin niya. So once you selected, you have to train. So that's our preparation. So important yan to prepare. Plan, select, and train the teachers. Okay. Now, for the implementation na, before we implement it, we have to ask the following question. How? No, paano natin gagawin? Okay. How are we going to make it accessible? Okay, so siyempre, sinama natin yan sa plano. So, talo natin kay na, di ba? Part ng preparation natin. How are we going to make it accessible? And actually, entertaining sa bata. Baka mami, nag-insert ka ng YouTube. Yung YouTube, nakakatamad yung boses. No, kahit ikaw, tamad na tamad. Or you cannot understand the accent. So, you have to ask yourself. When you are preparing already your lesson, ask how. No? How will this be accessible to my Students, baka I gave them a link na ako lang pala ang pwedeng mag-access. Okay, so ask yourself about that. Another how is, how will my activity promote higher order thinking skills? It's very important. Do not just link a video, tapos tapos na. Make your reaction, period. No, that's not proper. Write a question so that the students will think. That's what I'm always telling my teachers. Be sure before your students go out of your classroom, they think 
gumana yung utak nila. I'm always telling that to them. Paano? You ask them question. Same thing with this mode of learning. You're not there eh. So what we should be sure of? To provide them, to help them think. No? How? By giving them questions related to what you have posted. Do not just leave them with, keep the comments of what you have viewed. Write three to five sentences. That's a no, 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 no. Instead, why do you think, who are the characters in the story? Why do you think the reaction was? How will you? So, may mga questions ka na in mind that you are already uh, thinking, you know, while preparing for the lesson. O, paano kaya ito? O, ito, gagamitin ko itong vlog na ito eh. Ililink ko dito. Ah, ito yung mga questions ko. Okay? And always provide feedback, no? Formative assessment, summative. Okay? Um, tingnan nyo, how will I... How will I check the understanding? Will I include a Google form? Will I include also a um, a lesson, no? a quiz? Okay, so yung mga ganon. Or uh, papagawin ko ba sila ng poster? No? So provide feedback on the lesson. So ito na yung sa lesson part natin, no? sa implementation. And you have also to consider how will you divide the lesson? How will you put the unit into smaller chunk. So the whole unit and then divide it into a smaller chunk. And that is what you're going to do in your online platform. Do not, do not just write there, earth science. Um, uh, plate tectonics, something like that, volcano, something like that. And then what you did is you, you loaded the learning management system with all the books, with all the links, with all the video. Hindi siya naging one by one. So you think of, tapos sasabihin nyo, uh, submit this uh, for one month. You have to read, learn, blah, blah, blah. You have to finish this. No. Oh, that's a big, big no. You have to think, how will you divide the whole unit into chunks of lesson, no? bites of lessons? So that's it. So we have to consider the following house no? before we implement a synchronous learning. Okay, andyan pa po ba kayo? Kaway kaway dyan? Okay, another one of course to consider in transitioning to asynchronous learning is to evaluate. Lahat naman eh, lahat ng programs, all projects, it needs evaluation. Otherwise, there will be no improvement. So you have to evaluate. No? You have to provide feedback regularly based on the feedback ng estudyante at feedback nyo kayong mga teachers na gumagamit nito. Okay? And of course, if you find out that I successful tayo sa first, ano ha? Okay, let's celebrate success, na? No? Kaya lang, pandemic, easy few pa tayo. How can we celebrate? Okay? Ah, pwede kayong uh, mag-post sa mga social media na, wow, we did it for the first time, blah, 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 etc. We had an asynchronous learning together. We do this, so you celebrate success. You can also have a Zoom meeting together with your with your favorite um snacks out, no? Yung mga... Pag lumalabas kayo, you can have it together pa din. No, importante, you celebrate success. In short, you give each other um, boost no? because you have done a successful job in implementing asynchronous learning. Okay? Still there? Kaway-kaway po sa mga guro, sa mga magulang din na nakasama natin because I know na hindi lang puro teachers ang nanonood, may mga parents din no, that they want to learn also about this topic. Okay, these are the tips and toes. Iksabihin tips and toes, my tips, what to do, tatlo lang ang tatandaan with all those that I have discussed. Tips and toes, toes for implement, implementation or action. Number one, careful planning. No? Remember, it is not only the technology. It is still the teaching. At sa teaching na yan, we teachers are the most important one. So if we carefully plan how to conduct this form or mode of learning, I'm sure there will be, we can ensure success in students' learning. So carefully plan. Number two, Collaborate with your peers. You work with your fellow teachers, no? Kanina, I have given you the PST. 
So do it with your with your fellow teachers in your school or in your department or in your grade level. You do it together. And you tayo sa sitwasyon na hindi normal eh. And this will be our new normal. Hindi na dapat uso sa atin yung kami lang. Ako lang nakakaalam. Siya lang nakakaalam. Ganyan. And she share. We put together all the things that we know. We put together. We put the, the students' welfare first. Sila to eh. No? Ay, ayoko tong isya kasi baka mamaya masabihan na akong ganito. No, hindi na uso ngayon yan. So what we need is to collaborate. As long as our intention is one, we want to help our students succeed. Even we are in pandemic, we can do it all. Walang internet connection. Sige, gawan natin paraan. Paano kaya yung bata? Hindi pwede to. Asynchronous, paano kaya? Anong gagawin? So you collaborate. In preparing for your activity in asynchronous learning, collaborate with your peers. Share readings. Share the tools. Learn as one. Learn together. Okay? And of course, it's very important to provide feedback for improvement. Kung hindi maganda, ito yung isunod. Sunod naman, ito naman. So you try one at a time, one step at a time. So what is important? Is we teachers, we make just like what you are doing now. No, kahit na dapat nagpapahinga na tayo, nagtutulog, but we are learning. We're trying to learn new things. We're trying to innovate. We're trying to equip ourselves with knowledge and skills necessary for us to teach our students successfully. Kaya hindi totoo na wala tayong ginagawa. Tama? Oh, hindi to hindi kasi nila alam kung paano tayo natin pre-prepare yung sarili natin. No, wag na lang silang patulan. Marami tayong ginagawa, no? So, we can always we can use this time na nasa ECQ tayo to plan na rin, no? Paganahin na natin yung ating imagination. Ito mangyayari. Wala pa tayong klase. Mag-asynchronous learning tayo. Paano natin gagawin? Ito na, no? So, you try to consider what I've discussed a while ago. Okay, with all those that I have said and I have shared, I just want to give you these bits of thoughts to ponder. Technology, no? Ako, um, I've known several technology applications and I have tried my, I'm always telling my teacher, oh, you tried this, no? Natutuwa na sa teacher ko, itatry niya yan. Tapos gagamitin na nilang lahat yon kapag uh, natry nila. So I still believe, no, with all the technologies that we have, Technology can never replace the skills and strategies the individual teacher employs to ensure student success. Do you believe in me? Yes. But with our situation now, this is the time that we need technology. And we can only have that if we will sharpen the soul. No? Pagalingin natin, sarili natin sa mga kakayahan na kailangan natin no? para patuloy na magserbisyo sa ating mga mag-aaral sa ating mga bata. Sila kasi yung importante para sa atin. Sila yung mga sinumpaan natin no? na kailangan, may, there will be continuous learning. Tulungan natin ng Department of Education, tulungan natin ng ating mga principals, ang ating heads, ang bawat isa. Paano tayo magpaplano para sa mga batang ito na umaasa sa atin? Okay? And the real winners no in this time ng pandemic natin i want to say that the you know i want to take uh, uh, the saying of barbara fletcher the real winners in life are the people who look at every situation with an expectation that they can make it work or make it better okay so if you will if we will implement the asynchronous learning no alam natin din magi-improve yan Di tayo successful, mag-i-improve yan. Itong situation natin ngayon, let's expect we can make it work. We can make it better. Di ba? Tama ba ako mga guro? Oo, tama yan. No? Tayo mag, magkaroon tayo ng pagkakaisa as teacher. Kasi we will be working in a few days na. No? For how we have to plan. We have to start planning and we have to to conduct no? um, the needs assessments. We have to continue. Kahit na nakaisik yung gawa natin ng paraan. Okay, um, with that, um, so I hope you've learned something uh, from my discussion. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for joining me. 
uh, salamat sa pakikiisa sa mga pinagawa ko, mga tinanong ko. And thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much to Bibal also for inviting me for this session, uh, a week-long session of their flexible learning via YouTube. For questions po, right now we will be uh, answering questions if you have questions or clarification based on my discussion. But for some questions about um, e-certificates, about the Vibal platform, please email customercare at vibalgroup.com or um, contact them through their headlines posted on your screen and through the landline. Okay. And I would like also to take this opportunity to invite everyone for the Vibal Summer Program. So enrollment is now open. So I hope you will have this time to enroll. To go, if you would like to enroll, go to uh, summer.vibalgroup.com. It's a very good experience for your uh, students, no? for your for your children. If you have children at home, tapos ngayon, no? try them with. But it's very, um, very affordable po ang kanilang uh, program for this um, summer. So I hope you will uh, take a look at their uh, mga publication materials. No? Uh, this summer program is designed for ages 3 to 18 years old. So yung mga nanonood natin, if you have uh, kids no, with those age, uh, it comes with an interactive and fan content and certificate of completion to those who will finish the course. So for more information, please go to summer.vibal.com. Now, course offerings are English, Science, Math, ICT, Filipino, no, and all others. No. Our viewers, if you are interested, and I hope you will be interested, please uh, visit their website, summer.vibal.group.com. Okay, again, thank you very much. This is BAM in Tatano. Uh, you may, those who would like to clarify something about uh, technology, those who would like to have assistance, please do not hesitate to email me at vintatano at gmail.com. Yung mga nabibigyan ko dati ng training on tech, technology integration, until now may mga nag-message nag pa sa akin. So if you will message me or your school would like to ask for assistance, just uh, inform me that you are one of the viewers of Bibal para mas madali yung communication natin. Okay, before, uh, habang tayo ay nag, uh, nag entertain na ating mga questions, uh, may I ask you, please um, help me uh, with, with this one. I want you also to experience the Padlet. No? Sa mga alam na yung Padlet, it's okay, that's good. So, uh, visit the <clears throat> website, padlet.com, that is the one in your screen to write your take takeaways or what you have learned today during my discussion. So, tuloy-tuloy lang yan, no? Sa mga ayaw mag-type noon, pwede kayo doon sa QR code. So, if you have your QR scanner in your cell phone, you may use the QR code. I-scan nyo lang yan and then you are going to uh, be directed to the Padlet. Iki-click nyo yung plus sign sa right rightmost bottom and then write something about your takeaways. Ano yung natutunan mo? Ano yung gusto mong gawin, gamitin after this discussion? Thank you very much. So at this point in time, you're going to, to answer questions if there are questions. Meron po bang question? Hindi lang, hahanap tayo ng question. Okay, so... How about our pupils in far-flung areas cannot afford uh, cell phone loads and the like? This is what I, I was talking about kanina. No? Um, we can do partnership talaga if it's possible. No? Pero kung talaga mga nasa far-flung areas at very impossible, wala talagang magagawa. We can have different modality. So this is the time that we can have a multimodal approach to teaching na. So if asynchronous learning or online platform is not possible, try to think of something, di ba? Napag-aralan natin na ang distance learning, di ba? Pwede rin yung isasend mo sa kanila. Okay? Uh, ako ay suggest pwedeng yung 
barangay, magkaroon tayo ng, if you know uh, where your students are, kaya nga student profiling is very important no, sa sitwasyon natin ngayon, para we will know uh, saan yung mga bata natin. If they belong to one barangay, tapos walang mga cellphone, walang cellphone, walang lahat, katulad yung sabi ni Ma'am Elinon Fernandez. Fernandez Zone. Okay, uh, pwedeng yung module ipadala sa kanila. No, through their barangay. So we can do partnership like that. Pero if we can do something para magkaroon sila ng online uh, learning, just like what I've said kanina, we can do partnership. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, shout out sa mga barangay chairman, sa mga mayor, baka pwede tayong magtulungan sa eskwelahan. Let us find ways. I know we can do and find ways. Di ba? Oh, teacher tayo eh. Kaya natin yan. Okay. Uh, from Anne Sevilla, ma'am kindly, okay. um, how can you, okay, meron pa tayong question, how can you make maximize asynchronous learning to schools with limited platforms? How can you make maximize asynchronous learning to schools with limited platforms? Uh, when we say limited platforms, Kasi as far as I know, ang platforms naman, uh, meron tayong mga free na mga online platforms. And ang magiging limited talaga natin is the access due to internet connection. Alam nyo mga kaguro, don't worry, hindi lang po tayo ang namumroblema talaga sa internet connection. Kaya lang what we are trying to provide now is para dun sa may kakayahan at kaya naman, di ba? So di naman kasi lahat yan eh. Kung meron kasi kwentang bata, di naman lahat yan. Walang internet, pwedeng 10 dyan, meron, pwedeng 20, meron. Ano? So, uh, we can maximize, sabi ko nga kanina, yung careful planning ninyo at saka um, yung collaboration nyo, mamamaximize nyo yung mga topics, mamamaximize nyo yung, yung activities that you will provide there. Okay, that is for you. To, so, careful planning for you to, to maximize the asynchronous learning sa eskwelahan ninyo. What are those countermeasures we can do to avoid cheating in asynchronous learning? Cheating. Uh, we don't say it's cheating if the student can access sa external resource. No? Example, meron kang... Hindi yan, I, I don't think we can say it's cheating. No? Um, pwedeng... Um, I'm thinking of yung mga ginawa na namin sa, sa asynchronous eh. Uh, pwede po na meron kang tanong tapos meron kang pinasagutan na nandun din yung, yung source na, no? na nasa LMS mo na. Hindi naman po, kaya nga sabi, ito yung advantage ng asynchronous. Eh. Students can manage their own learning. They can look for outside resources. No? So hindi na natin pinag-uusapan dito yung cheating, yung ano. Um, just give a clarified instruction sa mga bata. Do it on your own. Um, you may use external resources. Huwag niya sabihin na bawal tumingin sa labas ang internet. O di lalo nang titingin niya, bawal, sabi ni Mang, gawin natin. Ano yung mga bata, pag bawal, eh, ganilang gagawin yan. So, walang ganun, but give them clarified instruction. You can also search on the other links aside. If you think the, the sources found here are not sufficient to answer the question. So, pwede kang magkaroon ng gano'n, no? So, sa mga quiz naman, pwede nyo gawing may mga application tayo na mga time-bounded. So, limbawa, five minutes lang lang sasagutan. Hindi na yan makakapag-cheat, ma'am, sir. Kasi five minutes, alagay mo dyan. You only have five minutes to answer the problem. Okay, so five minutes yan. No, pag tinuruan sila ng magulang nila, ng math o sinagutan, um, siguro, clarify lang natin sa mga bata. A clear instruction always is important. No? Instruction, as much as possible, do it on your own. Ganon. No? You, you may ask help from me, just PM me, or you may ask help from your, your um, parents, but do it on your own. Yun ang parati lang natin sasabihin. In that form of learning, talagang we just need to trust the learner. Eh. Huwag niyong sasabihin na na uh, nakikita ko kayo kapag ganyan. No? So may mga panakot ka pang moment. Uh, 
uh, even if I don't see you, there is somebody up there who can see you. Wala na mga siro, sigurong ganun. Just make it clear to your students before the start of asynchronous discussion or learning na gagawin ninyo. Ano yung objective ba nyo ito ginagawa? Para saan ito? At sino ang dapat ginawa? So may clarified instruction tayo. Goals, no? Clarify ng goals. Okay, I hope I have answered your question. So from uh, uh, that that is that question came from Ma'am Sheila, no? Yung what are those countermeasures we can do to avoid? And this one naman from um, Jessica Aguilar. How many topics do we have to cover in our subject? Ay, sir, uh, ma'am, depende po yan sa learning competencies, no? May standard po tayo. Kami sa DepEd, we have our learning competency na na-identified, no? Kahit naman wala pa tayong pandemic, may learning competency tayo. And we have this time limit, uh, time-bounded, no? Na kailangan i-cover natin for a certain, uh, for a particular period of time. So it's up to you po kung ilang topic. Kaya kung natandaan niyo po kayo na doon sa isang discussion ko, sabi ko, divide Divide the unit into chunks. No? Huwag niyong ibigay ng biglaan sa bata na unit 1, nandito lahat. No. It must be, although self-paced yan, give them clarified instruction. Kasi basic ed ito eh. Ito kasing asynchronous discussion, commonly ito na talagang ginagawa na sa mga college. So sila, kahit na saan yata, binabagsakan, pero I don't think ganun din ginagawa ng mga professors. Um, kailangan talaga naka-divide naka naka into strategically yung mga lessons natin na ibababa mo sa bata using this kind of um, learning. Na, so kung ilang pong topic, depende po yan sa competency na covered nyo for a particular period of time. Thank you, Ma'am Jessica, for that question. Uh, from Ma'am Catherine Coro, paano po kaya ma-address mga e-live, ano alibay ng mga estudyante na di makapasa ng outputs o sagot kesyo mahina ang connection o walang load. So there will be another mode na gagawin. Okay? Kaya nga po, before you start that, tingnan muna natin, lalo ngayon na sitwasyon natin, na let's think about our situation now. Ilan ang bata na kayang maka-access? Ilan ang batang hindi? No? Uh, let me just share, like for us, no, what we are doing now. We were instructed to prepare module na hindi lang siya pang online. Pwede rin face-to-face -face siya. Pwede namin isend sa bata. No? Pwede sigurong mag, no? pag-isipan natin no? sa school. How will this module reach our students? No? Baka may mga bright ideas yung mga kasamahan natin. Uh, sabi ko nga kayo na we can do partnership with our barangay. Sila lang naman talaga yung mataasahan natin ngayon to help us reach our students makipagtulungan tayo. Baka may mga guro na malapit doon sa mga batang yun. Pwedeng pick up sa labas ng bahay si module. No? Something like that. Pero meron ding um, asynchronous ka. So halimbawa, pinagawa mo ng output. So para sa mga hindi makapasa, siguro you can submit. Oh, may pigeon hole kayo sa labas ng skwelahan o sa barangay. Doon na lang ibibigay, doon idadrap. So pwede natin gawin tong time na to yan. No? Habagat hindi pa tayo nababalik sa normal talaga nating eskwelahan. And even matapos ito, itong, mga, itong pandemic natin, no? we're praying na sana matapos na nga, uh, makalabas na tayong lahat, parang laya lang makalabas. Eh, no? um, tayo ay, we can still uh, turn to asynchronous discussion kasi extension naman to ng discussion natin. And this will make, this modality will make our a lesson enrich. No? Pang enrichment itong gantong klase ng discussion. At ito nga, napapanahon ito ngayon. Ngayong time na ito yung pinagdadaanan natin. Ito yung napapanahon natin gawin. So kailangan nyo nalang ma-equip pa if you don't know some of the tools. You still need to equip yourselves. Magsama-sama kayong guru sa eskwelaan. Ano bang kailangan natin gawin? Ano dito ang mga pwede? No, ang dami-dami nyo nang napanood, itry nyo yan. Ask somebody to teach you. Baka meron sa pool nyo, hindi lang nagsasalita. Okay? So pag may alam, sabi ko nga kayo na, ito yung time that we really need to collaborate, to work hand in hand. No? Teach as one, hindi lang to learn as one. Teach as one, learn as one, and then teach as one. Di ba? Thank you for that question. Uh, paano po kaya, um, so nasa, nasagot ko na, Will there be another training in using vSmart? 
Yeah, magandang question yan. Uh, if you would like to have a training, talagang rigid training, sabi ko kanina, whenever you need uh, to try something, talagang kailangan hands-on kayo. So that's a very good question. If you want to try more about Vsmart, please contact the Vsmart, uh, Vibal, no, via customer care at vibalgroup.com for demo request. So pwede sila sa mga nanonood sa ating mga schools who would like to, to try Vsmart, Again, contact them through customer care at vibalgroup.com for demo request. Okay, tingnan pa natin. May time pa ba tayo sa mga questions, mga ma'am na kasama ko sa panelist? Tingnan pa natin dito. Ah. Uh, Saan na ba? Huwag ka ni Maximize. So, nasagot ko na. Okay. Mhm, mm mhm, mm puro mga ano mahina connections o walang load. Paano kaya ma-address na sabi na natin na will there be another training? Okay. Can we invite you in one of our in-service training, Ma'am Bam? At uh, thank you po sa invitation, no? May mga invitation sa tayo, may mga nagpi-PM din sa akin. Salamat po. I am very much willing to help. Just send me a message para tinan po natin kung saan natin sasaksak sa time natin yung ano, no? Pero I am at your service po. I am very much willing to help. Oh, can we invite you? Uh, ano ang F? Um, okay, for those who are asking about the summer program, you can visit the FB page ng Bibal Group also. So para sa mga katanungan doon, no? Mag napakagandang summer program. Lalo na yung mga parents na yung mga nanonood dito, teachers na gusto ninyo yung mga anak nyo matuto rin ngayon asay sa pagtuturo ninyo dahil kayo yung Nag-aaral ngayon at saka nagbe-bake, nag-gardening. So, live it to be bad. Pwede rin po yung para mabawasan tayo ng gagawin. From Gary Byron, thanks ma'am for the shared knowledge and empowerment for us teachers. You're welcome ma'am Gary. Ay, Sir Gary, sorry po. You're very much welcome po. Yun po ang, ang intention natin ngayon. Uh, even ng, lalo ng Vibal, that's why they... Um, sponsor this kind of activity for us. Okay, meron pa po bang katanungan sa mga nahihiya na magtanong? Um, how about po inclusive education? How can you use asynchronous learning under inclusive education? Um, para po dyan sa type na yan, um, kasi kailangan talaga ng guidance sa mga bata dyan. Eh. Siguro ako ay suggest you include the parents. No, if you if ito yung nakikita nyo na part, include the parents, bigyan nyo sila ng guide card. Ano ang gagawin nila para ito gawin ng bata? Kasi different, uh, sa inclusive education, yung mga children natin, if we're talking about children or students with special needs, um, hindi naman lakaya, no? so iba-ibang type yan. So hindi lakaya na paharapin mo yan. No, be partner with parents. Kung may papagawa kayo, kung ito ang gusto nyong piliin, itry ninyo, bigyan nyo rin ng guide card ang, ang parents. Ito po yung gagawin. Tapos, yeah, assess nyo. So, meron kayong partnership ng parent. And I'm sure most of, sana, no, yung mga parents, ganun ka, ng ating mga students with special needs. Sana ang parents, ganun sila ka, supportive or ka, cooperative sa mga teachers ng SPED para nang sa ganun ay ah, uh, still magtuloy-tuloy pa din yung learning for continuous learning ng mga bata natin ngayon. Uh, that, that question was from Sir Jimmy. Thank you po for that question. I hope I answered your question. Is there a particular age for learners that's ideal for synchronous, asynchronous learning? Is it okay for intermediate or primary grade level? Kapag mga masyadong bata, um, I suggest there should always be a guidance of parents. Kasi you cannot, even naman ngayon, di ba? Uh, laging sinasabi sa mga parents, do not leave your um, do not leave your child unattended, no? Sa sa kanila mga tablets, sa kanila mga cellphone. Give them something, may time man sila sa cellphone, be sure you monitor them. Same thing if you are going to have uh, asynchronous, lalo asynchronous. Sa synchronous, yeah, I know preschool nowadays, lalo nag-start yung ECQ, may preschool na nag nagsi-synchronous learning talaga. So kahit Uh, bata, no? nakikita ko yung mga posts ng mga ano sa Instagram, sa Twitter, yung mga mga anak nila maliliit, naka 
naka-synchronous learning. So, possible naman siya. Basta kung asynchronous learning, pag mga bata masyado, there should always be um, a partnership with parent. Give them an instruction or sets of instruction or let's call it a guide card on what to do for that particular activity. In that case, may strong partnership tayo ngayon ng parents at ng school. Diba? So, may maganda rin ano to, dinulot tong sitwasyon na to in twin case. Ah, uh, ayan, thank you ma'am, si Ma'am Jessa Aguilar nag agree siya, yes, be partners with parents. Ito po talaga yung panahon na ang kailangan ay pagtutulungan, no? Hindi yung yung kami-kami lang, kayo kay lang, no. Even sa mga far-flung areas na laging sinasabi, even sa mga sa mga parents natin sinasabi, wala kaming time kasi may trabaho kami, nagtitinda kami, nagaganyan, nagbabalat ng bawang, nag, and, and all the works, no? kaya wala saan time sa bata. Ito ngayon, dapat may time sila. So ito rin yung ipapaintindi natin sa mga magulang. No? Na kailangan gabayan. Kung papadala nyo ng mga worksheets yung mga bata sa, sa bahay, kailangan malinaw sa magulang. Ito po ang dapat natin gawin. No? Kaya shout out po sa mga magulang dyan na nanonood. Pakisabihan yung mga kapwa niyo magulang. Makipagtulungan po sa mga school. Okay? Can we also plan for a collaborative learning either in synchronous or asynchronous? Yes po, Sir Hilario Casis. Yes po, Sir. Yun po talaga ang kailangan. We have to plan. Uh, part ng preparation niya ng pag paggamit natin ito. Kailangan we plan. No, anong gagamitin natin? Magsisynchronous ka ba? Kaya ba talaga ng infrastructure-wise? Kaya? Pag hindi, turn to asynchronous. Ito yung mas, mas kaya natin. Eh. Kasi hindi, mas impossible, no? Uh, yung sabay-sabay tayong natututo ng mga bata. Parang ginagawa natin ngayon sa atin. Oo, kasi we have our internet connection. Pero paano yung mga, mga bata na minsan data nga, may internet connection, walang connection. So, sagot nga dyan is the asynchronous learning. No? Kaya naman po, sir, na iplano. Talagang dapat po nagpaplano tayo. From Ma'am Jeanette, Janeline Ponsalan, the task of the teacher is really challenging. We have to be updated with the new apps and platforms to be ready for the virtual learning. Yes, I agree. I agree with you, ma'am. Actually, there are 1,000 to 1,500 apps being developed every day. No, at sobrang overwhelming sa atin yung mga teacher. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, you have to plan. You have to select lang. Huwag yung lahat itry. No, may feedback form pa naman kayo. May feedback pa kayong part. Eh. Select muna kayo. No, itry nyo. Okay? So maganda yan yung mga research base. Na ako yung mga pinagsasabi ko dito sa inyo. Mga shinier ko mga tools. Tested ko na silang mga tools. That's why yun po yung mga binabanggit ko. So yung mga hindi ko pa tested, ayoko siyang banggitin kasi baka mamaya hindi naman maganda ay eh, galing sa akin, maraming nakikinig. So I am always uh, sharing what I have used and I have tested already. From Ma'am Christina De Leon, when schools open, how do you think could we conduct classes where half would be physically in school and half would be online? Yan na rin po ang ini-imagine namin ngayon, ano? Paano po kaya? Na, sabi ko nga, if we will start with school profiling, uh, student profiling, I mean, uh, malalaman na natin ilan ang kaya, ilan ang hindi. So sila pwede, yung mga kaya, ah, sige, uh, asynchronous discussion tayo. Yung mga hindi, pwedeng 10 lang muna kasi we have to be, we have to still um, observe social distancing. Eh. Kahit nga, di ba, sabi ng presidente natin, Pag nagkaroon na ng bakuna, lift agad, lahat tayo labas. Hindi pa din eh. We still have to be used to, uh, I mean, we still have to practice yung proper hygiene, social distancing, covering ng, ng uh, mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing. Dapat lahat yan and washing hands. No? And more so, with physical distancing. Kaya pag nagbukas, eh, lalo pa ngayon, wala pa naman bakuna. Pag nagbukas yung school, kailangan talaga iplano po natin, no? Um, pwedeng yung mga walang-wala talaga silang i-conduct natin sa loob ng, ng school. Tapos yung mga meron dahil na, na profile nyo na yung bata na wala talagang paraan eh. No? Kahit na you cannot save, we find, we find ways eh. Talagang wala na. So, ang gagawin nyo na lang is to really 
papasukin sila. Eh, paano yung 25 pa din sila ang date ng, ng classroom? Eh, di, ischedule po natin. Di ba? Lagi po yung may paraan mga mom and sir. Naniniwala po ako. We can always find ways. Kasi laging ang end natin ay ang kapakanan ng mga bata natin. Ang intention natin lagi for them to learn. Tama po ba ako? I know you are agreeing with me. So, kailangan po talaga careful planning. Okay? From Michael Onte. Hi, ma'am. What can you suggest to those additional teachers? If they're going to use asynchronous learning, but they have limited knowledge in using computer. Thank you po. Sabi ko po kanina, ito yung panahon na kailangan nating magtulungan. Kung ito po yung paraan para makapagturo tayo, asynchronous learning, at hindi ko, halimbawa ako, no, hindi ko alam. So dapat itrain ang teacher. Kailangan po talagang patutunan natin. Kung ikaw ngayon na nakikinig sa akin, you still don't know about this, find ways para matuto. You can text me, ask me, paano, tuturuan kita, no? Um, yung mga ganun ba, you can always ask your fellow teachers to teach you how to use a particular app. Again, magtutulungan tayo. Learn as one and teach as one. Okay. Alright, uh, meron pa po tayo mga questions and ano kaya lang we ran out of time. Um, for the takeaways po, uh, please uh, make use of the Padlet. Can we post it again? Please write, I hope you are writing on the Padlet right now. Yung mga nakakapture po ng ano. Uh -oh. So we can still continue our discussion through the Padlet. Tapos kayo din po, if you have some questions, gamit nyo din po yung Padlet. No? Um, pupuntahan ko pa din yan, yung Padlet na yan, uh, to attend to your question or you may also email me. Marami pong salamat sa mga... Thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much, Vival, for this opportunity. Please don't forget, uh, dear teachers, mga moms and sirs and viewers, even mga parents natin, or if may mga students tayo, please don't forget to subscribe to Vibal YouTube channel. And also, um, abangan nyo po yung iba pang mga webinar series natin dito. And also sa FB group page ng Vibal, follow nyo po para sa mga announcement, lalo na po sa summer program. Shout out po sa mga teachers sa Raso Liman, sa Coleo San Agustin. Hi po sa mga ka-department head kong science na nanonood sa Manila at ka-department head ko po sa, sa Raha Soliman. Kay ma'am, sa aming principal, ma'am Kides, magandang hapon po. Uh, sa aking pong supervisor, uh, ma'am Rojas, maganda pong hapon. Thank you very much. Ma'am Donna, kamusta po kay sa Coleo San Agustin? Hello po. Good afternoon, teachers. Uh, learn as one. Let us learn as one. Let us teach as one. Magtulungan po tayong lahat para po sa ating mga mag-aaral at para po sa ating bayan. Magandang umaga po ay magandang hapon po at mabuhay po tayong lahat.